The following KQED production was produced in high definition. Nothing exceptional about this scene, right? Just kids running around. Think again. Today, children spend far more time inside than out, and experts warn about potentially dire consequences. Pediatricians are now saying that this generation of children may be the first to have a lower life expectancy than their parents in our history, and it's because of this sedentary lifestyle. And it's not just a question of adding more soccer practice. You know, the greatest increase in child obesity in our history occurred during the same two decades as the greatest increase in organized sports for children in our history. So when experts talk about the need to get kids outdoors, they're not talking about encouraging them to play sports. They're talking about the unsupervised nature play of days long gone. We were just out there running. We were just out there doing things and, you know, building forts and, and playing hide and seek in the, in the trees and, and climbing trees and all that. That's a very different expenditure of energy. San Diego children's advocate Richard Louvre recently visited San Francisco as part of the whirlwind of activity created by his 2006 book, Last Child in the Woods. In it, he coined the term nature deficit disorder to describe this modern day plight. Well, nature deficit disorder is not a known medical uh, diagnosis. Maybe it should be, but not quite yet. We now know from a decade of studies that nature experience is terrific for the ability to learn. It's great for creativity. It's great for physical health. It's great for emotional health. So when you take the benefits of nature away from kids, it seems to me that that's what nature deficit uh, disorder is. Louv's book has sparked a nationwide movement dubbed Leave No Child Inside, which has mobilized lawmakers, state parks, and nonprofit groups. Breakfast. These children from San Francisco's Hunters Point neighborhood camped overnight at the city's Presidio as part of a new program to bring low-income kids to the national park. I like it when I'm out here because we can like stay out of trouble, more fresh air. For 13-year-old Kyrie Roberson, the peace and quiet is a welcome change from the public housing project where he lives. If I go to the courtyard, like the basketball court, people try to shoot it up, or they'll get out their cars and start shooting at people. Have you seen any shootings? Yeah. Yes, I have. Where are we putting our stuff once? Right outside your tent. Community activist Stephanie Hughes, who goes by Sister Stephanie, organized the trip. It's beautiful here. There's serenity. You know, you can hear the wind, the bees buzzing by your ears, you know, the sound reflecting off the trees. It's beautiful here. Sister Stephanie understands the restorative power of nature at an intuitive level. She's never even heard of nature deficit disorder. Nature Deficit Disorder. I've never heard of it, but I'm sure my community suffers from it. That would probably explain a lot of imbalances in my community. Sister Stephanie isn't working in isolation. Bills in Congress and in the California Senate call for increasing funding for outdoor recreation for low-income kids, as well as for environmental education in schools. Both bills face uncertain chances of passage, but outdoor education advocates say they are a good start. These initiatives actually have a grounding in science. There have been studies of the environment outside a house. If it's greener, if there is even a green view from a, a window, kids' stress levels go down. So do parents' stress levels. The reason harkens back to the very origin of our species. Studies have been done all over the world uh, uh, what kind of images people relate to. And in all kinds of cultures, all kinds of settings, urban, uh, rural, etc., people are always attracted most to natural landscapes as images. Among those natural landscapes, the number one landscape that human beings all over the world are attracted to is the savanna. Now, where did we come from? 
We're hardwired. This is part of who we are. This is a deep part of our humanity. And because of this, our health depends on spending time outdoors. Nature play helps to make us physically and emotionally adaptable, which are the foundations of health. This happens through the balancing of two parts of our nervous system. One part, the sympathetic nervous system, is engaged when we're target focused, concentrating on a single object or task. The sympathetic system is the fight or flight system. It tends to sharpen our awareness towards something that we either have to get away from or, or um, go towards. The parasympathetic nervous system, on the other hand, is engaged when we're field focused, like when we're lazily gazing at a vast expanse. In that system, we're more open. Our senses are more open and we are taking in information. When he read about nature deficit disorder, Sacramento psychiatrist Claude Arnett realized the outdoors could help him treat his patients. He started taking walks with them in the park behind his office and also set up a program at Soilborn, a three-acre organic farm in Sacramento. You take like two inches down from the head okay. and then that allows other side shoots to come out. Brian Marsh is one of several of Dr. Arnett's patients who have been volunteering there. I've had problems with depression, you know, frustrations with not being able to really get where I wanted to go. I was down in Ventura. I'd done a little film school down there, but um, I was, I was kind of getting into uh, unhealthy drinking patterns and I got a DUI down there. So I had to come back up here and, and start to figure out, you know, what I was doing with my life. Helps me defrag, like de-stress. It's really, really, really tactile, and it's right in front of you. You know, you you dig in the ground, and you get dirt on your fingernails, and it stays there. You know, it's really simple. You know, they've had that experience of being out and field focused, and then also having something specific to do, like pull weeds around a delicate plant, and 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 being target focused and they've had to move pretty fluidly between uh, those things. And so then that brings them to me in a more flexible and adaptive state. While other forms of entertainment, like video games and TV watching, are only target focused, nature play offers children opportunities to move fluidly between target focus and field focus. This is especially important for kids diagnosed with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. ADHD affects 5 to 10 percent of kids between the ages of 5 and 18, mostly boys. Many people feel that the problem with attention deficit disorder is not so much that kids can't pay attention, but they can't move fluidly between target focused and field focused. So the benefit for them for being outside is that their attention is going to be challenged in a number of different ways. Despite a growing understanding of the benefits of nature, several cultural shifts conspire to keep kids indoors. The list is long. More television, video games and homework, shorter vacations and fewer open spaces. And add to that dangers on the street, some real, some perceived. But even though the challenges may seem insurmountable, experts say the solutions could be simpler than adults think. This isn't just about going to Yosemite. This is about the clump of trees at the end of the cul-de-sac, too, that to an adult's eyes can seem insignificant, but to a child's eyes, that can be the whole universe. Back home in Hunter's Point, Kyrie Roberson has found just such a place. Instead of heading to the basketball court, often a violent venue, he walks up the street to a nearby park. I like this part better because you can lower the hoop for my little brothers and sisters. It's safer and you can, they can play on the little play structure. When I come back from school, I do my homework and then I come back to the park. Earlier generations were free to roam, but today's children are only allowed to venture about 100 feet away from home. Experts say sensational media coverage is fueling a fear that isn't borne out by statistics. Uh, the statistics show that uh, over the last uh, 20 years, the number of stranger abductions, classic stranger abductions, has either been level or going down. And yet this fear is unlikely to subside. 
because the fear is not going to go away anytime soon, parents, aunts, uncles, grandparents, we are going to have to take our kids into nature ourselves. It has to be intentional. It's not going to happen accidentally. In Palo Alto, a newly formed group is meeting to figure out how to get back to nature. It's the schedules, they're so tight, you know, the homework after school and, and getting them to soccer. The San Jose nonprofit Hooked on Nature recently started the Bay Area's first nature circle. The group meets weekly to share ideas on how to get adults and kids out into nature. I wish I could have more opportunities to take my kids to the beach or to the Baylands or wherever. But even if I can get the 15, 20 minutes a day when they're outside picking worms or trying to catch lizards in our backyard, that is just as important. And I'm here to hear everybody's story and share and all of that good stuff. I'm here probably because I'm a grandmother now. And I'm a fairly new grandmother, so I have my 16-month-old grandson, Axel, that I take um, two days a week. When we're out in nature, you don't need to program anything. It's, it's following his curiosity, my curiosity. And it's amazing, we have a, a glider swing in the back that we, every day that he's there, we spend some time just sitting there watching and he sees every hummingbird. He sees, you know, all of these things and he's just so curious. It's like, whoa, this is easy. <laughs> we, just, <laughs> we just enjoy. As these parents and grandparents are finding, even if you can't control the forces keeping kids and adults inside, stealing a moment to contemplate the sky or pick up a caterpillar is as easy as stepping outside. Keep Quest free. Discover more and donate at kqed.org slash quest.